Hello everybody, this is Ahmed and this is another episode of the Breakout Podcast here at the School of Advanced Studies, uh, SAS, here in Tumen. And today we are going to speak with Varya. We, uh, she is our student, she is our second year student and she is going to be talking with, about, with me about stress. So thank you so much Varya for coming in today. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So, um, so the discussion that you suggested to have today is that uh, we should talk about stress, whether it is something inevitable, something that is just part of life, or something positive or negative. Uh, when I come here, I would like to talk about does stress uh, really contains something negative or something positive? Because a lot of people strongly believe that it can help or it can um, uh, just um, fight uh, with uh, us. And uh, I don't have uh, such opinions that it can be negativized or positivized because stress for me is nothing. After uh, some readings and some courses, <laughs> I came to the conclusion that stress is uh, ordinariness that we uh, uh, live every day and that we feel every day and we cannot escape it. I think that you also think that this is a fact. And stress is just uh, something that that lives with, uh, with us like our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Um, but what do you think people will try to um, to to say, well, stress sometimes can be positive or sometimes they can be negative. What is the hidden here agenda of people when, when they say such a thing, when they try to interpret it, stress? Uh, it's according to circumstances, I guess, because people... Because our behavior of uh, human nature is that we need to guilt something. And uh, this something also can be uh, just feeling or circumstances that trigger us. And uh, people just create uh, the word stress. And stress is just some circumstances that leave you from the comfort zone. And uh, you strive to uh to come back and uh, guilt something and this something is stress but it is not guilt <laughs> i i think that sometimes people when they try to to speak about the stress and they interpret it why it is happening and all of that i think they are trying to find the reason for for their struggle uh because without a struggle i think that it might be considered as meaningless and uh, by then saying well i am being uh, i am being here uh stressed and the reasons are one two three mm -hmm. uh, so here they try to look at the stress as a positive thing or something that comes with the the good thing the meaningful thing that they are doing all right um but also when they say, well, I am stressed is because of the other people or the other things or t something like that. So stress here is being considered as a negative thing. So it, it matters. I, I think in my opinion, it matters a lot how we interpret stress before, because I think that the process of interpretation or how we, or the, how we, we simply look at the stress is the outcome of that is whether the perception can be considered as positive or negative one. But I guess that uh, the most general thing in uh, the whole interpretation of stress is uh, that you are not feeling good now. Mm -hmm. I mean that when you sit in home, everything is okay. But when you come to the place where, the, where you can see some triggers, you feel yourself not bad, but uh, not uh, it, it is not the same thing that you 
felt at home. And uh, it is not about interpretation, maybe, because if we talk about interpretation, a lot of things in our world depends on interpretation. And uh, from this, we can conclude that uh, this is this uh, a number of things uh, just are different for for every people. But we talk about stress now with you, and we understand that we have some mm, general definitions of this. Yeah. Because if it is not, and we have other interpretations. How do we can speak about it? And I have actually a question here about these different definitions of stress. All right. When, what is the borderline between stress and anxiety and depression, in your opinion? I know that you have read a lot of texts, books, uh, in psychoanalysis, in psychology. And what is the, why, what, in your opinion, what do you think the difference here between these three things? The anxiety, stress, and depression. Or we might say, well, they are three, the same thing. No, it is not the same thing because uh, anxiety and depression, as you mentioned, this is just effects mm -hmm. after stress, after stress factors, after stress circumstances. Because uh, why do we can say that this stress was bad or this stress was good? is uh, about some conclusions that we can make after we lived it. And uh, an anxiety and depression um, exists only after the fact that we have triggered and we get now some new triggers and we get now some traumas also maybe also exist it also have a lot of definitions from uh, psychoanalysis is Lacan trauma Frey trauma and etc but uh, it is about affection and stress is just an event mm -hmm. stress uh, also cannot be see cannot be seen as event because event is something just happened and uh, maybe repeat after some times sometime but um, according to Devin and uh, Devin thoughts that <laughs> we have uh, stress is something also ordinariness because if uh, there is no stress there is no new experience mm -hmm. and uh, just we cannot um, we cannot development without it. Mm -hmm. We cannot get development without it. But I don't know. I mean, sometimes when I when I hear these things about yeah, well, uh, this positivity around the stress because in this regard, the stress is being perceived as something actually positive, right? Mm -hmm. Because right now, well, you know, if you are not being stressed. Sometimes it means that there is nothing much going on with your life or there is only the old things. You're not experiencing something new. All right. So you are like, wow, OK, stress is very good in this regard. All right. When I feel stressed, it means that I'm approaching a new experience. It means that I'm approaching something new, something I don't know, something I will learn from and so on and so forth. All right. But then there are the other camp of people who simply do not like these situations. All right, that this simply that there is a rejection of that. All right, so do we have to teach people how to? Because right now, a lot of a lot of trends we can say about stress management. All right, uh, teaching people how to deal with the stress mm -hmm. um, and so on and so forth. Do we actually have to do these things? To teach, to teach people how to deal with the stress in order for them not to reject it mm -hmm. or to reject new experiences, but always have the opinion that they should perceive stress as an indication of something new about to happen. Uh, there is to think 
that I need to clarify. Uh, do we need to share with them our experience mm -hmm. or not? What do you mean by this? Well, yeah, at, at, at a certain moment, you will have to share your experience with them. Well, in I guess, this yes. case, no. Mm -hmm. In this case, no, because uh, I strongly believe that when I share my experience and say something like, no, it will be okay, just reject, just accept, and etc. It doesn't work because if we go back, it is about interpretation. And maybe a, a person will have uh, more worse experience than I have. And uh, the main thing that I need to, to do with stress factors, we just need to reject of our, of our conservative things about that stress is something bad or something good. It is not. It is nothing. Mm -hmm. I, I see like this because... Stress is just reality that happened and you cannot escape this and you cannot to do something with this. Mm -hmm. We just need to don't um, teach people how to reject stress because it doesn't work. They will think that, okay, stress is positive. I will feel stress every day. No. <laughs> it's it's bad don't do it uh just we uh we live with feelings and we also get some signifiers for a lot of um, things but stress in my opinion has no signifier but maybe a signifier is nothing in this case we need to talk with people and explain them that stress, it's okay, but it is uh, not uh, something um, extra uh, um, just a second, I try to remember the word um, it is not something uh, higher or lower, it uh, it's just the middle, and you live in this middle. Mm -hmm. You coexist with it, and you just need to accept this fact. And uh, in some cases, of course, you will feel yourself more worse or more um, better, but. It is just not uh, not according to some triggers. It's according to circumstances that you never experienced, and maybe it's that, that a time that you have to experience now. Mm -hmm. I see. I see right now. Yeah, it's just because. Yeah, I I I totally understand. Um, the 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 problem is that. Uh, what I'm having with the, with the stress in general or speaking with people about the stress is that sometimes that there are attempts to multiply and expand their the feelings uh, because I, I, I don't think that there is uh, that we are educated enough to understand or recognize the difference between stress and just being worried about something and most of the time some people tend to confuse the two things and then they perceive what they are what they are feeling as a, as simply stress and what happens afterwards is that as you are I mean, I agree with you completely with that is that an anxiety or depression is like the effect of af after the event of stress, mm -hmm. right? So I think that here also before even saying that I'm stressed about anything or I'm I feel just stressful, stressful right now, um, stress right now is that we also don't have enough education right to understand the weather or to recognize what what we are feeling at the at the moment is stress or just being worried and 
And I don't know what to do with these things because sometimes we all the time we tend to exaggerate what we are doing to dramatize what we are feeling. Mm-hmm. And uh, with this drama, all right, the, um, I think it, it has some sort of an 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 egocentric po- like dimension to it is that we would like to have much more attention to us because I cannot say to you I'm worried. If I said to you I am worried, you will probably calm me down with a diff- with a specific word and that's it. But if I said I'm stressed, mm-hmm. you will pay more attention to me, right? So in this regard, I'm I'm just I'm just confused about how we can be educated in regard to recognizing stress and just being worried. Uh, you want from me uh, to to show you what is the difference between yeah the, I mean the yeah, yeah. And do you think that there is stress. a difference actually even I think that when you worry you feel just um, <laughs> uh, it can be reversible maybe but when you worry you feel effective things. Mm-hmm. I mean, an anxiety. For example, when you come to the podcast and you have some pro- some problems with uh, speaking, and uh, you feel an anxiety, but how it was born in you? Mm-hmm. That's the thing that in the past you have some triggers, maybe that uh, born this affect uh, thing. But uh, when you stressed new trigger is born. Mm. I see it like that. Because when you stress, uh, it is something like uh, uh, a process when you just have and have and have and have uh, new uh, worrying things in your head. And after that, boom. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, after this boom, you just uh, start to to keep yourself in safety and uh, return in back, return your back in a more healthy state. But you you literally uh, do some not revolution, but but maybe some um, uh, some changes. Mm-hmm. And these changes affects on you, but when you just worry, is it it's depend only on person and only of time that he that that he has. And uh, when you just worry, no triggers burns. You just feel some anxiety, some affects things. When you start to stress, it's very long process. When you come home after this uh, event. You continue to think about it. Uh, this also can be maybe pathological or something, and you need to go to the hospital. But you continue to think, to think, and uh, after that, you will have new changes, mm-hmm. and these changes will affect in the future on you. That's the difference. It's actually very insightful. I didn't know that. For example, when you get when you get worried. Just because it's just all the triggers that they were there, but the stress—it's about the new ones that are being born. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's actually very interesting uh, because I remember, for example, my first ever presentation, I was very stressed. <laughs> yes. You know, uh, when I was on Ftai, uh, it was the first my presentation to the audience uh, and speaking in foreign language. I just bring a mask of anonymous, <laughs> yeah. and I and <laughs> there was a Stanimir uh, with uh, he just said to, so to me, yeah. okay, <laughs> and I will present in mask because I ha- I it, it will <laughs> it will be the most just easy way for me to hide my face. And the impression that 
there is there is okay nobody see me yeah. it's just a voice that do something and yeah. it is me and when i do when i just get comments and etc i also i remember this uh, uh event and i just okay now i without the mask but i just imagine that i have this now and it helps me mm. It was a stress and it warned some triggers, <laughs> but it also was funny because when I got comments uh, there, I just mm, <laughs> I just continued to uh, save this mask on my face. And when someone asked me to show my face, I just, oh, shit. <laughs> 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 And it it also was very difficult for me, but I overcame it, I guess. Now now I just imagine that everyone is nude. Oh, I see. I see. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember, actually, my... So I remember that I was very stressed because of my first presentation ever. But I don't remember the comments that were given to me. Because after... <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> After I, I was done with the presentation, I was like... <sighs> and then there were comments and I'm like, okay, I don't remember anything. I have no clue. I don't know even what did I answer, what did I say or anything at all. But that was also during writing and thinking. And uh, afterwards, I was like... I First of all, I, I went back to the slides to see what I actually said. Or what was this presentation about? Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, I was like, why did I speak about even about that? I mean, I don't remember why. I just, it, the words just came out. And, uh, and, and yeah. So, but afterwards I tried to get this confidence of talking more and more in, in front of uh, the public. Um, uh, of course, the second time I was worried, mm -hmm. I, but I wasn't distressed. Uh, until the moment came to uh, right uh, to TFY, and I remember my TFY very very well, like I as if it happened a week ago, uh, and I think because I got used to that, I got used to do this type of being worried, mm -hmm. uh, or I was worried of course, uh, but I wasn't distressed. I was worried when I go to talk or give any presentation, I can be worried. Uh, but sometimes it depends on the on the the scale of the event. Mm -hmm. All right. For example, if I'm speaking, if I'm presenting in front of class room, I mean class simply my peers. I don't think that I feel that worried at all. I don't feel anything because okay, you you don't know anything about what I'm going to present about. So sit down, and that's it. You're good. You will take my words as for granted. Uh, but with different different scales i think i get to be worried a little bit mm -hmm. and that's why the word when you sp when you spoke about this that there is a dif the difference between being worried and the stress is because the new the b the birth of new triggers yeah. right I, I think actually that should be the title of the episode the birth of new triggers maybe yeah <laughs> because yes i see uh, i see what what do you think and actually I remember my first TFI. Really? My first and and uh, yes, <laughs> <laughs> my first and last. Sorry, uh, but I'm just worrying. Yeah. I'm worrying, but um, I have effects, of course. Mm -hmm. I cannot just use the the thing with mask because. Actually, I, I thought about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought about it, but it, it didn't fit in my presentation. Or, and um, now, uh, of course, I have some effects from this FTI course, from TFI, but not because of the course, but because of my personal some problems with speaking. And I try to find why stress is, can be positive. Because after some stress, when we born new triggers, these effects become something uh, 
unpleasurable things and we uh, try to overcome it and uh, just uh, to live with it maybe but find some ways to do to deal with, with it in more pleasurable ways mm-hmm. Actually, yeah, this is this is exactly what what troubles me. Uh, I mean, what 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 bothers me maybe uh, about the idea of making what we are experiencing pleasurable uh, or something amusing or something that uh, ex- something somehow exciting. All right, I have a problem with that. Is that because I feel that we are underestimating the value of making mistakes or failing. All right or simply having something very unpleasant in front of us uh, because and this is this is my problem with this thing about it changing the perception of stress from being something negative to positive or how we think about the stress should all should directly affect how we process the stress and i think it's all uh, it's it's all about a trend to make anything positive Everything should be pleasurable. Everything should be an Instagram post. Everything should be just, I can just look at, I get entertained, I like it, it's amusing, and pass, 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 or or simply swipe. And I have a problem with that, is that because we are really underestimating the value of simply having really sad and unpleasant thing before us because life cannot just be a news news feed of an instagram account all right i don't think that we should we should do that i i think that the the idea of having stress as something also or even the process of thinking about the stress in a negative way should also be praised Mm -hmm. all right because a lot of things in our lives might be and can definitely be unpleasant Mm -hmm. all right so the other side of the coin bothers me a little bit and and the the intention behind it and i understand that there is a good intention right of empowering enabling people not making them having this effect of anxiety and depression afterwards and then they will will have like the the scale of the situation will become really worse right I understand that this is a good intention, but also here we are sacrificing really, okay, uh, the looking at things that are, they are unpleasant and not making them pleasant in our mind, because I think that this is manipulation of reality at yeah. the same time. Yeah, this is the most um, unpleasant yeah. <laughs> thing for me mm-hmm. when uh, some people try to reverse uh, their brain and their true interpretations, their true intentions that they have to concrete uh, think. Because um, it seems like other people just say you to think about it in more good way and you, okay, mm. I will. But maybe uh, just some things were created to to think about uh, them in more bad way for you personally and uh, when some pleasant things and some unpleasant things happens we just do not uh, uh, create <coughs> some co- uh, some common things with pleasant and unpleasant we just should understand that okay i don't like this but this will happen with me i like this and this will happen with me and uh, this uh, um, just uh, you are not prepared for for this of course but you will not you cannot deal something with it and the one thing that you can just uh, you can do you can do is live in your head with the things that it will happen sometimes mm-hmm. it will happen 
and uh, I cannot prepare for this because I I I can't say for sure mm -hmm. will it be or not. But maybe some bridges they I can just create in my head to overcome it, and maybe okay I will stress I will burn new triggers, but it may help me. Mm -hmm. It may make make me sad or mm -hmm. etc. But it will happen and I don't want to create some uh, pink glasses or some just fairy tales in my head that everything will be okay. Mm -hmm. It is positivism and I don't like it, <laughs> it's personal, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but you just live and uh, <laughs> don't, don't think about... Uh, Oh, it can happen, it will be sad or bad and just blah. 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 <laughs> Excellent. All right, with blah, we will finish. <laughs> we will end. <laughs> Excellent. So, um, yeah, so I don't know. So thank you so much, very actually, for coming in today. Really, you, you give me something actually to think about. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for that. But yeah, so this was our episode for today. Uh, we talked with Varia about stress, new the birth of new triggers. I really like this uh, thing. Uh, yeah, and uh, um, and yeah. So this was the episode. If you like it, please uh, like, <laughs> subscribe on YouTube, and uh, follow us for of course more episodes to come. Uh, if you have any questions to Varia. Uh, you are, I think, you are welcome to just simply to to ask her or message her. By the way, also Varia is the one who did the intro for uh, of of the podcast. Uh, that's her work. Uh, we had Daniel who did the music. So <laughs> <laughs> yes. Did so you mentioned uh, Daniel when you do of course. work, of course. Yeah, yeah. True. He was he was here also. True. Yes, true. Okay. All right. Uh, all right, so that's it. We will be in touch. See you.